Silver needs to go above 29 and a half. That's the resistance. Once it does that, it's going to attract a whole slew of new investors into the sector. And that's what's going to be uh, the most important thing for precious metals in, in uh, almost uh, six years. Lior, I want to play a game with you. I'll, I'll give you a word. You give me your 30 to 60 second response. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching Yankee Stacking. I am particularly excited today because I'm bringing back Lior Gantz. Lior will help us make sense of the recent volatility with silver and gold and help us with our precious metals stacking. If this is the first time you've heard Lior, you are going to be a big fan in short order. He is the co-founder of Gold Standard Media, the creator of the Wealth Research Group, and has been featured on various news outlets like Kitco News. So after you hit that little like button right down there, we'll get this interview started. No, really, I, I mean it. Just hit the thumbs up right, right there. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Hi, Lior. Welcome back. Great to see you. Great to, great to be here. Lior, I want to play a game with you. I'll give you a word, maybe yeah. maybe two words, but you give me your 30 to 60 second response. Sure. And then after we get through it, we can go back and do a deeper dive on a couple of them. How does that sound? Yeah. Russia. Um... Putin took a huge bet uh, when it comes to his strategy. He was thinking it's a it's a it's a clean. Uh, it's going to take only a few days. I'm going to uh, win. They're going to capitulate. Um, it did not happen that way. He's losing a fortune every day. He has to feed and clothe and uh, do everything for his army, and he's just uh, he's now in a situation where. He neither he either needs to find a uh, a rabbit out of out of a hat, or he's gonna uh, be taken down like badly. It's gonna be awful. So the the next week is gonna be all in for Putin, whatever, either win or, or lose. China. Um, I think China is in a place where it's trying to see what what the West. NATO uh, and Europe and Australia, I would uh, include that in that same, but how they respond, because whatever they look and see, that's going to help them understand uh, how they will approach uh, in, in the coming years, the situation uh, with Taiwan. Will it be a military uh, event? Will it be uh, more of a negotiation? What is the uh, appetite from the Western, uh, the Westerner uh, voter and the middle class in the West regarding uh, defending Taiwan. Stock market. Um, I think there's just a whole lot of fear out there. Um, the, the situation resembles a lot other fake um, panics that we've seen in the past where the recession fears are even uh, creating a worse situation but in my opinion, the market is getting it wrong, and we will see uh, the end of this bear cycle towards uh, the second half of the year after the midterms, and we're actually going to finish the year higher than we started it. All right. You said the word. I'm going to say it back to you. Recession. Yeah. Um, I mean, everyone's looking at this uh, inverted yield curve. Um, and, and I have to remind everyone that if everyone's looking at something, uh, it, it most likely is priced in. Um, the real world, I just, I don't see the evidence. I don't see it anywhere um, in terms of a recession. I, and I'm talking to people who live in uh, big cities, in smaller areas. There's a lot of pain out there, but it's, there's no recession in sight, in my opinion. Gold. Uh, gold is having a classic 2016 year, but it can morph into a uh, parabolic 2009 to 2011 era. And we can deep dive on that. But basically, because the stock market sucks, uh, gold is being used as a hedge. And you can imagine 
all the eight figure and nine figure clients calling their hedge funds, telling them that they need to hedge and they're buying gold right now. We saw the biggest one day inflow into the GLD ETF on January 24th. That's the biggest since inception since 2004. So smart money is in. I think retail is not woken up to this. Uh, they do not believe it because after 2021, they just feel like nothing moves gold anymore. And they just, the, I, I think uh, the fact that silver is so lagging shows you that retail is not in yet. Uh, I do see signs, and those are the signs that I'm talking about in terms of the uh, 2009 to 2011 era, that there's a new generation of millennials that are going to get fixated on uh, gold and silver. And I can tell you some of the real world indicators that I'm looking at to tell you that. But this is classic 2016. You're saying a couple more of my words, but that's great. Let's just go. Silver. Okay. Uh, s right now, silver is the last hurdle holding um, the, everything back in terms of the miners, the juniors, all, all the speculative, uh, you know, big risk, huge reward opportunities that are out there. They're held back because of silver. Silver needs to go above 29 and a half. That's the resistance. Once it does that, it's going to attract a whole slew of new investors into the sector. And that's what's going to be uh, the most important thing for precious metals in, in uh, almost uh, six years. Oil. Um, I mean, oil is uh, overpriced. Obviously, oil is going up because of the rust situation. So expect it to come down once um, you know tensions ease. But it's not going to plummet. Uh, it's going to stay above uh, above a hundred dollars for a few months. Who knows? Maybe it's a cycle. But I mean, um, the you got the Democrats. And I'm just going to take ten more seconds. The 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 oil execs, it's Chevron and Exxon. Um, I mean, I don't want to give out the finger, but that's probably what they're get, dishing these Democrats that told them. Uh, that the environment is what matters and, and they want them to now uh, move in, in capacity. But these oil executives, they answer to their board. And when you're trying to uh, advance a multi-billion dollar project and you know that at any day a government official can come to your property and hand you and slap you uh, like a $40 million fine for whatever, I mean, it's, it's hard to trust the government. Food. Uh, food is a huge problem, um, but you're not going to see the problem in the United States. Uh, obviously, food is expensive. I, I, I get it. Where you're going to see the food uh, becomes become a real problem is in poor places, like really poor places. Second world, third world. If they, if if these people are hungry, you're going to see riots. Um, we we we've seen before. Now I'm not talking Africa. I'm talking the second tier com uh, world where you know the the monthly is between ten and thirty dollars, uh, you know, salaries, which is most of the world. So that's where you're going to see uh, the food uh, problem become uh, uh, a real disgusting, uh, you know, event. But I'll tell you, the anger is palpable here over gas, Absolutely. over food, wheat, all-time high. I mean, we're looking at some serious impacts. I mean, even one of my employees is like, I, I can't drive in anymore. I mean, it's it's a big deal to a lot of people. It's here. a big deal. But is it, is it riots in the streets? I mean, not it's yet. More, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's it's going to take a while for, right. for food to become a problem in the United States. Fed. Uh, they're going to raise rates uh, in 96 hours. And, uh, or, or, uh, <laughs> On the 15th, whenever yeah. you post this, who knows? But on the 15th, they're going to raise rates. 25 basis points is my prediction. They're going to raise rates again in June. They're going to raise rates again uh, in September. And uh, I think after the midterms, uh, there's going to be so much ease that comes into the markets because the, the Republicans are going to win that um, I think that, that uh, we won't see this scenario of seven or nine rate hikes. Millennials, I think you mentioned that earlier. Millennials are the differentiator for the United States. Uh, the Europeans don't have a robust millennial generation. The Japanese don't have one. 
The Chinese sure as heck don't have one. Millennials are the source of growth for the next 10 years. They have not gotten married in about two years. They're all going to get married, form families, huge real estate boom in America. If you're not into real estate, part-time, full-time, get into real estate, whatever your background is. Once you finish this, uh, listening to this interview, figure out how you get into real estate. 76% of America's millionaires in the past 250 plus years have come from real estate, including the former president and uh, real estate, real estate, real estate, real estate. That's going to be, I know, uh, you know, prices are sky high, but it, 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 fine. They'll go through a trough or whatever. Real estate is in huge shortages. Uh, people are moving from state to state because of hybrid workplace. Uh, huge, huge opportunity. The millennials are so underinvested in the stock market. It's the way it is. All right. This one's right. not exactly a word. It's more of an acronym, but CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currencies. I'll probably be your age when that thing becomes a reality. Really? Yeah. I mean, look. Wow. Look at, look at all of the... Um, Wait a minute. How old do you think I am there, uh, <laughs> Leor? <laughs> I'm kidding. Like 42, 42. <laughs> oh, what so, a nice guy. Um, look, let's, let's look at... Um, history, okay? 1944, Bretton Woods. Uh, did that monetary system uh, result from people just saying, hey, you know what? Let's change everything. Let's just wake up every one morning, bring the British, bring the American, find a new currency. No, it was because there was a World War II and they needed a new city. It was crisis. Why did Nixon decouple us from gold? Uh, well, because Charles de Gaulle told him either you audit or all of us Europeans are going to phone our, our own gold standard because we don't trust you Americans. So crisis. How did Bitcoin come about in 2008? Crisis. It's crisis. So unless we have a crisis, we won't have a Fed coin because the Fed is not going to all of a sudden introduce the the, the highest uh, uh, um, you know terms of uh, uncertainty into the market. It doesn't need to. There's nothing wrong. I got you. Hey. Okay. I'm I'm turning 57 next year. I that means you're turning 57 next year because that's when I think CBDCs will hit. Okay, oh. <laughs> we'll be here. We'll be here to see it. Yeah, we will. We'll have to we'll have to talk. All right, the last okay. word. Last word, and then we yeah. can go back. Miners. Yeah, silver. Silver is the key. Okay, uh, it's always been the key. You need you need the speculators to come in. Secondly, you need M and A activity. So. In 2016, what sparked this whole boom in miners in 2010, 2011, is that the Barracks, the Newmont, the Rio Tintos, the BH Bulletins, they are dishing out dividends, but they also have depleting uh, properties. They need to buy properties from mid-tiers. The mid-tiers need to buy properties from the small tiers, and that's not happening yet. The junior miners, they're almost always undervalued because their only exit strategy is to sell the company. So unless you feel like this company is going to get sold, it's always going to trade at a discount. We need M&A activity because if I feel like this miner is going to get bought out for 3x what, it's, what it is today, and it can happen at any moment, then that will make me rush to buy a junior miner. Right now, there's no rush. So silver, M&A. Interesting. All right, I'm going to jump back on a couple of these because I have to do okay. a little four, a few more questions for you. Let's let's okay. start with gold. Okay, you even mentioned maybe you want to deep dive a bit there, um, and and tie it in maybe with millennials. Are are they ever going to be turning to gold? Do you think? Yeah. So go online, go to YouTube, and write uh, either Ray Dalio or Changing World Order. It's a thirty. I'm sorry, a sixty minute uh, infographic. Amazing. Oh, uh, you know. Ray Dalio status. It's been watched by four or five million people already in like uh, a few days. It's amazing. It's amazing, amazing, amazing. And it's, I think if, if they ever release the analytics of it, that there's a lot of millennials in there. Millennials are very, very, uh, very educated. They like to watch videos and get educated. Um, and I feel like they are now uh, starting to, it's starting to drip to them what the financial system is, because they they didn't know that before that they they didn't know what the Fed is, how this works, why the national debt is thirty trillion, all these things are coming to them right now, and it's because they see like 
They're growing they up, Lior. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're they're growing up, but also they see like, man, if I if I'm 25 and I just save blah blah blah, I need to be like 90 to, uh, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. they, they see that uh, corporate America is a, is a huge hurdle. They see that investments are not uh, easy. They see inflation everywhere. They want answers. Right, they're right. they're curious, and unlike the boomers, th- where you know a newsletter would have to come to your door, like you, you get a newsletter. Uh, today, you can Google like anything, and and right. there's a gazillion channels to to help you with it. So when when 2008 happened, I was 24. I was a pure millennial, and to me, Ray Dalio was a Mike Maloney. I read the book, and, and the book is basically this video. It's all about like, look at what happened with Greek and Rome and it, it happened all before all these cycles, blah, blah, blah. And I, I buy gold and I buy silver. That's how I got into this. And, it, and it, it's because there was a crisis, a solution, and it clicked. And then, you know, 2009 to 2011, I saw silver go from like nine bucks to 49. Um, so if we look at previous rate hike cycles. There's been six rate hike cycles since 1971. Twice in the 70s, one in the 90s, uh, you had the 2000s, and then you had 2015 to 2018. Six out of six times, gold has risen once that you do the liftoff. So March 15th, we're gonna lift off. Uh, gold rises six out of six times, an average of 30%. Let's let's say gold on the 15th is 1,900, and not 2,000, 1,900. Um, 30% of that is 570 bucks. So you're talking about the next two years, gold can reach like 2,500 uh, historically um, with a lot of certainty. So uh, gold looks good. I think millennials come into silver um, if it's if it continues to look this way and it's gonna be a, an amazing cycle. Some of these things you're mentioning, I've already read in your Wealth Research Group newsletter that you email out. Um, yeah. Lee, are, how can people get in on that pithy yet valuable email blast? Yeah, uh, wealthresearchgroup.com, the, news, the newsletter. You can sign up on the homepage at wealthresearchgroup.com. Uh, or you can download any of the PDF files, um, the special reports on the special reports tab, and that immediately... Uh, gets you into the newsletter as well. Excellent. Thanks so much for joining me, Liara. This has been a lot of fun and uh, very informative.